Great news when it comes to Home Depot, whose CEO, Ken Langone, is a questionable figure to say the least. Turns out that workers, over 100 of them in Philadelphia, have petitioned to unionize. This is great news because it shows the momentum of unionization continuing. These news stories, while they oftentimes get ignored by the corporate media, are definitely getting a lot more attention online and in platforms that young people are paying close attention to. And I think it's inspiring workers in various sectors of the economy to get active, to organize their workplace. And I especially love to see it at a place like Home Depot. Now, I should note that if their bid is successful, they'd be the first ever Home Depot store to unionize. Although I will say that the Home Depot delivery drivers in San Diego specifically did successfully unionize with the Teamsters a few years ago, back in 2019. Now, the Philadelphia workers are creating their own independent union, similar to what Christopher Smalls and Amazon warehouse workers in New York did. In this case, they would be titling at the, uh, the Home Depot Workers United, that's their independent union. And their demands are exactly what you would expect their demands to be. Similar demands that we've talked about when it comes to other stories, other companies that are unionizing. They want better compensation, they want better store staffing, they want better working conditions. Uh, and they have concerns with the treatment that they've been receiving from upper management. Now, uh, let's go to Vincent Quiles, who is a Home Depot worker and a union organizer. He says, long story short, we just got screwed over during the pandemic. This company made money hand over fist and we just feel exploited. A lot of times we feel like we're just a means to an end to make other people a lot of money. Vincent, you hit the nail on the head. That is exactly how you're treated, that's exactly how pretty much every worker in this country is treated because you are a means to an end. And the whole point is to maximize profits because under this system, if it's a publicly traded company that we're having a discussion about, the executives at that company have a fiduciary responsibility to provide a return on investment to their shareholders. That is their number one priority. And in order to maximize profits and return, provide a return on investment to shareholders, they got to cut costs and the first place they love to look is labor. So they look to underpay you, they look to cut corners. They just see the workers who generate the revenue in the first place as a big cost burden, which is infuriating to say the least. Now, according to labor reporter Jonah Furman, he writes for Labor Notes. You should definitely read his work. He does honestly some of the best labor reporting in this country. Um, he says that workers at the Home Depot in Philadelphia routinely worry about paying bills, having enough food for both their kids and themselves and paying rent. And to be sure, Home Depot did real well during the pandemic. Uh, the starting wage at their stores is around $14 or at that specific store in Philadelphia is around $14.50. The nearby Walmart, the nearby Walmart actually pays more. So while the Home Depot workers suffer, the Home Depot investors are making money hand over fizz. They're getting that return on investment. Let's see how much. In a meeting with a regional vice president, Kiles questioned why the company couldn't pay premiums for operating machinery like forklifts or for translating for Spanish language customers or for working in multiple departments. The regional manager touted that the company had spent a billion dollars on employee compensation. You spent $1 billion over 500,000 employees, Kiles remembers saying. And $15 billion in stock buybacks, not to mention $7 billion more on investor dividends. Mm. It's their fiduciary responsibility. But look, I say that not to minimize what the workers are going through, of course. I love that the workers are organizing because they need that leverage, they need that power to rein in that corporate greed. But the reason why I mention that fiduciary responsibility to shareholders is because the way this system is working is not, it's not that it's flawed. There is no bug in the system. It's working exactly how it's intended to work. It is the feature of the system. And that's why it's so important for these workers to organize because if they don't, if they don't have collective bargaining power, then they don't have the ability to 
have a seat at the table. They don't have the ability to have a say over their working conditions or their pay. And so this is really great to see. Now, Kila's closely studied, and this is what I'm talking about, the Amazon labor union's victory in New York. So this momentum keeps going, it's snowballing. And that's why if you're thinking about organizing your workplace, you definitely should do it. Now is the time. There's a lot more attention paid to this issue. People are feeling inspired by what they're seeing around the country. In fact, Kiles said, if Chris Smalls could do that at a warehouse of over 8,000 people, we could do it in our store of 300. And about a month ago, the Home Depot managers discovered the nascent union. And I wonder, I wonder how they reacted to it. White collar management was flown into the store to hold captive audience meetings and one on one conversations with employees about how little a union could do for them. The store manager was switched out overnight. It's, it's interesting, um, how about how little you've done for the workers, Home Depot, how about that? I mean, they made record profits during the pandemic. So, I mean, maybe share some of that revenue that was generated by the workers, but no, they're not gonna do that. But Kiles thinks the, the move is backfiring. He says, now it's funny, corporates walking around the store and talking to people, and they think they're doing something, but it's backfiring. People are like, "Oh, we filed for a union, now all of a sudden you care? Mm. And here's how Home Depot has decided to publicly respond to the news. Sarah Gorman, who is a spokesperson for Home Depot says this, while we will of course work through the NLRB process, we do not believe unionization is the best solution for our associates. And look, the sweetest part about all of this is Ken Langone. I never thought I would ever say that sentence, but in this context, it makes sense. Ken Langone, that guy, terrible person. I mean, he's proud of how terrible he is, huge Trump supporter, despises the idea of sharing the wealth with the workers who make his wealth possible. Okay, Langone is, my notes referred to him as a certified bastard, <laughs> okay? He donated to Joe Manchin and promised to throw him a massive fundraiser after he tanked the Build Back Better program. He claimed that discussing income inequality in America is actually the same rhetoric that Nazis use to gain power. Real classy guy, real classy. He called Bernie Sanders the Antichrist. He claimed that Bernie Sanders would make America like Cuba, Venezuela, and Russia. And he also criticized call up, he criticized policies like free public and community college or a single payer healthcare system. Because homeboy's rich. He's rich off the backs of the workers that he's trying to prevent from unionizing. So let's teach him a lesson. Let's unionize. And I love that the workers are doing it. I love that they're fighting back. I love that they're doing what's necessary to get a seat at the table and have a say over their paychecks and their working conditions. So more power to them. Love reading about this, love hearing about this. Let's keep it going.